In my first year of teaching, almost every curriculum usually includes some kind of a flame test lab where the students are often given some kind of an inoculating loop that might look something like this. Um, the platinum wire or nichrome wire that's used, they dip into water or and then try to capture a little bit of a salt crystal or dip it into a solution of the salts that you want to use for the flame test. And then to clean this off, you have to dip it into a fairly concentrated solution of hydrochloric acid and then heat it in the flame. And I just found it incredibly messy, very noxious, and the room smelled very awful by the end of the day. Um, a very unhandy way to do a flame test. Uh, I found a way a little bit later on that you just use a regular Q-tip. Um, the Q-tip you can moisten with a little bit of water, dip it into whatever salt you choose, and then hold it over top of the Bunsen burner. It's a very, and then you can throw it away when you're done. It's a very clean and efficient way of doing a flame test. Uh, I also found that through the teacher that I replaced at my current school, that she did a really nice extension in her flame test lab. And I always strive to put real world connections into what my students do in the laboratory. She found that by putting bananas into a flame test, you can actually test for potassium and sodium. So when you get to the idea of why do we have to do this, well, if you're actually taking something that you already know and using it in the laboratory for a confirmatory test, it's a really nice extension of the lab that they do. I'm going to do this as a demonstration. I don't find as a classroom demonstration that this works very well because my students can't get close enough to the flame to see the colors very well. So I make this one of the stations that they do as they're going through their flame tests. I have various stations set up around the classroom. This is one of the ones that they do so they can see it firsthand. They can also look through the cobalt glass to see what it looks like with the cobalt blocking out the sodium flame so they get a better picture of what ions are actually present. The big question this part of the lab is called is, is there sodium in bananas? Which seems kind of strange because my kids say, why are you asking that? It's the potassium that we're worried about because they know that potassium is in bananas. This is also when I bring up to them the need for a healthy skepticism because I ask them, how do you know that there's potassium there? How do you know that there was not a vast governmental conspiracy trying to brainwash you into thinking that potassium is actually in bananas unless you test for yourself? So I try to empower my students to test things out for themselves and not rest on their preconceived assumptions about the way that the world works. So this demonstration looks at sodium and potassium inside of a banana. Now, the recipe that the teacher gave me before called for mashed up bananas, and then they take it, scoop it, and put it in the flame. Uh, I found that that worked OK. But then I had this mess of a banana goop, and I have to do this over two days, and there were fruit flies by the next day, and uh, I just found it a pain to deal with. And then I found that banana chips that you can buy already dehydrated. Um, they also put some corn oil or palm oil into this to keep them a little bit moist, um, so you'll get some nice oil dripping off too, and helps the fire itself. Also work for this demonstration. So the first thing, my students already see this. I'll show you the flame test procedure for potassium and for sodium. Uh, I also found that when I did this, I told my students Q-tips have two ends, use both ends. They don't. They use one, they throw it away. So I started doing this with all of my Q-tips, and I would cut them in half first before they get into the lab, and then they hold them with the crucible tongs in the flame. That way they can't waste one half of it when they're not using it. So all they do is they have some distilled water or deionized water. And they just need to moisten down the Q-tip. I usually tell them just make a reservoir and dip. Um, so they just dip it in, and then they'll dip into whatever salt they have. Uh, we'll look at sodium first. I just have a, uh, also the other thing you want to make sure you don't have is that you have your stock reservoir of sodium chloride sitting out. Uh, if you do that, your entire thing will be contaminated by the end of your lab. I set out just a small evaporating dish full of the salts that I want to use for that day, and then I repackage them if there's any left over and keep them as only the flame test salts, because that way if one of them gets contaminated, I don't care. The whole bottle hasn't been ruined. But I had a nice bottle of potassium chloride that is now a wonderful mixture of sodium chloride and potassium chloride together. Uh, so we are going to need to dim the lights just a little bit. Let me light the Bunsen burner first. And I always tell my students, hold the flame test on the outside edge of the flame. Don't go for the cone in the middle. They are, at this point, familiar that the hottest part of the flame is that tip of the cone. We don't want that. We actually want the outside of the flame. You get a better flame test that way. So if we can turn the lights off. And then I just hold this in, and the students can see a very brilliant gold flame 
from the sodium when it touches the edge of the flame. Uh, and I also told them hold this on just the very edge of the burner because inevitably some of the salt drops in and it's better to hold it on the side. So you get a very brilliant gold flame for sodium. I'll repeat the same flame test with potassium as well. And same procedure, just dip in a little bit of water, wipe off any extra, and then dip it into your potassium salt. And if we dim the lights one more time, you can see that the potassium gives a pale lavender color. And I tell my students to be as descriptive with color as they can because they're going to need to come back to this. So some say lilac, some say purple, some say lavender. If they say purple, I usually try to tell them to be just a little bit more specific. So then the part of the lab when they get to the sodium, they've already had to do sodium and potassium. And when they come to the banana chip, they have, that's one thing they tell them they have to do in sequence. Do the sodium and potassium first, then try the banana chip out. And they do this with and without the cobalt glass. But if we turn the lights off, and we hold the banana chip in the side of the flame. The question we're asking is, is there sodium in bananas? And if you're looking for sodium, we're looking for what color flame? So we're looking for that mixture. You'll see a mixture of yellow and, or the yellow gold, and a mixture of the lavender flame as well. So to answer the question, is there sodium in bananas, if we bring the lights up, I usually go to the board or the day after they finish this experiment, um, they, they have to answer the question, is there sodium in bananas? And the thing that we're going to answer is, of course there's sodium in bananas. It's there twice. Thank you.